It's a gleaming landmark in daylight or darkness from any vantage point of the San Francisco Bay Area. We, we take the precaution of actually notifying the FAA when we're going to have the lights out because they have used it as a beacon for landing patterns. The 13th temple constructed by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints perched in the Oakland Hills serves as a beacon to all. It's not a warning foghorn to stay away. It is, in fact, a beacon to draw people here. The iconic 95,000 square foot structure underwent phases of temporary closures for renovation over the past few years, most recently for nearly a year and a half. I've completely missed the temple being here because for me, this is my source of strength every week. Now, for the first time since its original open house in 1964, the public will have a chance to experience the unique beauty of the Oakland, California temple before being rededicated for its sacred purpose. You know it's different, you know that it's sacred, and you can feel that there's a different spirit here. Yeah, we get to have an open house because our, our neighbors, everybody gets to see uh, what's inside, that it, it eliminates the feeling, well, is there's, what is going on in there? And they learn about it. Latter-day Saints were some of the first settlers in the Bay Area. More than 170 years later, the temple serves tens of thousands of members in dozens of congregations. Before serving as an apostle, Elder Quentin L. Cook called the Bay Area home for 33 years. It's a real thrill to see it rededicated, to see it be refurbished, and it has a, it has a place in my heart that's very, very special. The project manager over the renovation has his own special connection. When I was a young man living in Sacramento, California, this was my temple. I have a picture of me staying on these very steps I just renovated three years ago with my grandmother and my father. And here's this young kid, skinny <laughs> kid, ready to go on his mission. Land was purchased by the church in 1943. A large multifunction meeting house was built in the 50s. And construction started on the temple in 1962. With each reinforced concrete layer, the vision of architect Harold W. Burton began to take shape. He wanted to celebrate things like air conditioning and artificial lighting and these technological breakthroughs that have been happening in the first half of the 20th century. So he incorporated a windowless building. Burton also added towers, the center reaching 170 feet, uncharacteristic of modern design, but appropriate for the look of a temple. Freestyle reliefs, reminiscent of more classical motifs depicting the Savior in different scenes, were added to the front and back of the temple. People at first glance think, oh, this must be Christ and his 12 apostles. But a closer look shows that there are women and children there. These are his disciples. These are his followers. And all of us, as we approach the front door of the temple, can look up, consider ourselves among the group assembled there as his disciples. What may be considered even more unique is the subtle Asian influence found in the temple's exterior spires, upturned roof caps, and railing. It's completely in tune with its location, with the San Francisco Bay Area. Adding more distinction, a one-of-a-kind water feature that cascaded down from the second-level garden terrace into a courtyard reflection pool, but removed in 1969 because of irreparable leaks. With modern-day materials and technology, the leaking problem was rectified and the aesthetically pleasing waterfall feature restored. So now to enter the building, you walk under the waterfall to get to the front door. Other technological improvements include seismic updates and converting steam boilers to more energy efficient natural gas. But great effort was made to stay true to Burton's original design. Every time we got into this design and we thought we could maybe do better than Burton had done, we ran into problems. When we followed Burton's original designs, it worked. Those efforts, evident in the restored entrance of white oak paneling and finishes, marble flooring, and relief artwork, this piece depicting the Savior in the Garden of Gethsemane. The main floor includes a new waiting area and one of the only areas with windows added in the latest remodeling to pick up the natural light and view of the courtyard's reflection pool. In the morning, the, the sun will rise and the, through the windows, and it's like they've never had that in this building before. 
now it's kind of back to where we thought if Burton had these features and this opportunity, I think you'd find that quite acceptable. The bridal room, also on the main floor, features elegant full-length mirrors, opulent crystal sconces, and refined oriental design seating. Jesus, by his own example, taught that all must be baptized to enter the kingdom of heaven. In the temple's baptistry, directly beneath the celestial room, devout Latter-day Saints are baptized for their departed ancestors who did not have the opportunity in this life. That doesn't make them members of the church, but they will have the right to accept those sacred ordinances. The oriental motif is highlighted throughout the baptistry. Gold leaf decorates the high ceiling. Marbled columns accentuate the room's corners. Refinished bronze railings complement the deeper bronze-colored oxen that represent the 12 tribes of Israel and shoulder the baptismal font. The second floor of the temple contains instruction rooms where temple patrons learn about God's creation, love, and purpose of life and receive the most sacred sacraments of their faith. This was one of the first temples to employ film instead of a live presentation that enables more patrons to participate in one session. Burton believed a windowless design and theater-esque setting would enhance the viewing experience. Ceiling rooms are located on the third level, adorned with dark cherrywood paneling and backlit marble altars. This is where families can be joined together forever. The mirrors remind patrons of that blessing with seemingly endless reflections that symbolize eternity. More intimate ceiling rooms include another unique feature, barrel vaulted ceilings. Artwork from a variety of artists fill the halls of the Oakland Temple, from beautiful landscapes to images of Christ. The celestial room represents the progression to heaven itself, wood, marble, and elegant furnishings reflect modernism's vintage color palette. While the continuing oriental theme is present down to painstaking detail in the sculpted carpet design, mirrored on the ceiling in gold leaf. We hope that when you walk into this temple now, it will still feel very much like a 1960s modern building. It will feel spruced up, it will feel cleaned, renovated, updated, but it will still feel like Burton had designed this building. We want people who are not of our faith to have an understanding of what we believe and who we are and what's the purpose of the temple. It isn't just building something magnificent. It has a purpose to bring us closer to heaven, bring us closer to Jesus Christ, who we worship.